Hello, beautiful souls. This is Michelle. Hey, Hooping World. It's Hannah. And welcome back to our Flow and Grow Fireside Chats. <laughs> we did it. We rehearsed that for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I hope you all enjoyed Pretty that introduction. Much. You better. So in this video, I wanted to actually sit down and do like a little in mini interview with Michelle mm -hmm. about what it's like to be a small business owner and an entrepreneur because that's what she is, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Yeah. yeah. And tie in the hooping part of it, being yeah, a, a, it's a hooping <laughs> entrepreneur. It's a it's a hooping business. It's, it's a, a hooping <laughs> entrepreneur if you didn't know. <laughs> business. Yeah. So mm -hmm. please tell me the name of your business and what you're doing. Okay, the name of my business is Autumn Flow. And when I started hooping, I really got thrown into the hooping world and, and developed this immense passion for not only hooping, but also for um, helping others develop their own flow and really just seek out the best versions of themselves in the process of doing that. So the mission of my business is to create a community which empowers and inspires other hoopers and to do so while staying connected with each other and it really being a community of people mm -hmm. growing together yeah and connected to nature yes that's connected to nature that's a huge, a huge part, part of, of my it. brand I love yes. that yes I love it nature is my biggest inspiration and I flow in nature as much as I can and I bring it into every aspect of my life I hike I camp a lot kids mm -hmm. and every time I'm out in nature I always have my hoops. It's my biggest inspiration and I want to really make sure that that is seen as part of my business yeah. mission. I think it's very apparent. Thank you. Yeah Good. and it's it really inspired me to mm -hmm. make time to like get outside as a, as a gal I'm living so in the happy. city. I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> yeah I, I think it needs to be a priority in my life to get yeah. outside a little more often. Yeah definitely. Yeah. It's very empowering to be out in nature. Why do you think as adults that people forget to go outside or forget to be in nature and to connect with that? Well, I think I think you get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of life and you have so many obligations as an adult. And I don't think that people make getting out in nature a priority. Mm -hmm. And for me, being out in nature and hiking or just sitting outside for 10 minutes and meditating, I make that a priority. That's so cool. So it doesn't have to be like a big like 10 mile hike that you go no, on. It could just be like, not. just like go take five minutes and walk yeah. in the park. Just that short connection with nature can completely reset your mindset. And it just gives me this very overall just calming and grounded um, sensation. Love it. So whenever I come back mm. into my crazy life, because you know my life does not evolve just around <laughs> frolicking through the woods, I do have a, a crazy household, as you have observed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me more stamina and patience coming back to my crazy yeah. life. So getting out in nature helps you cope with it does the rest of your responsibilities. Keep me balanced. And, yeah. yeah. So tell me about what it was like to start your business and the timeline of growth for your business. Well starting my uh, Autumn Flow business was probably the biggest milestone in my hoop journey mm. and in my life. Yeah, it's a big, I never it's a big ever it's a would have imagined <laughs> that I would own a small business. Yeah. I started by creating free Instagram and YouTube tutorials and I felt this calling to just keep doing that and just keep giving back to the hooping community. Mm -hmm. So a few years into doing this, I recognized the potential of how I could reach more people. Mm -hmm. And this was two years ago that I started my business. So it's still a new business. It is very yeah. new. Yes, it's yeah, still yeah. a very, very much a learning process yeah. as as owning a business is a constant learning process. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm still, I'm a baby business. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I launched my business with one course, with my online mm -hmm. beginner course. And I did not plan on branching out into selling hoops and uh, traveling and teaching at retreats and building a brand even. Yeah. I just planned on just creating this one course for beginners to have a 
easy to follow structured outline of how to start their hoop yeah. journey. But that was a really big first product it to was. release as a business. It was How huge. many videos was that? 50. 50 videos that you filmed 50. on your own. Yeah, 50 videos that I filmed on my own. All, in all out in nature. Yeah. I'd do it in front of waterfalls and um, I'd go hiking a couple miles up a mountain after driving an hour to get to the trailhead with all of my gear and just be like, I hope Amazing. this course is successful. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just trying to random find but here. <laughs> I did really enjoy creating it. Mm -hmm. Like I remember telling myself, I, the day that we launched that course, I pretty sure I threw up. Yeah. Um, but I remember telling myself, you know, it's okay if it doesn't get a bunch of sales. I really enjoyed this process mm -hmm. and I'll just keep going, you know, just keep doing yeah. what I love and maybe the online business isn't for me. Um, I love how you were able to set another goal for yourself within that process. So the goal wasn't only sell a ton of courses, which you did end up doing. Yeah. You sold a lot of, of that course. Yeah. Um, even like the first day at launch that mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. but you, you, you had like goals outside of it and you saw value in doing the work and not just yeah. in what the end result might be. Yeah. Which I, I love. And that took time mm -hmm. to come to that realization. I started to enjoy it more and more the more deeper I got into creating mm -hmm. my course. And I started to get more and more passionate about it and more comfortable talking to a camera. Yeah. And, and realized that I wasn't only talking to a camera, I was gonna be talking to students all over the world that watch this back, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and it became, it became a self transformation for me. Wow! Yeah, oh, it that's really so cool. did. Yeah. It, it transformed um, my self esteem, my yeah. confidence. It transformed my dreams and the way that I thought about, you know, the steps needed to create for myself to to get to those dreams and. Dreams sometimes need to be flexible. Oh, totally. You know? I agree. Like yeah. my dream yeah. of starting this business um, didn't start as what it is now, mm -hmm. you know, building it up to several courses and hula hoops and traveling and teaching and teaching local classes and everything. It just started with this one course. Mm -hmm. But then it just kind of naturally evolved from that. And that was driven by my students. When I was asked for another course multiple times, I was like, all right, that scares the crap out of me because <laughs> yeah. it took me forever to do my first course and an intermediate advanced course is like a whole different level of hooping. Yeah. So, but what got me through honestly was just my following and my students. Yeah, because the support was there. It was there. Yeah. The, the support of the hoop community is what inspired me to build my business to what it's at now. I love it. So I'm really interested to know, you mm -hmm. grew this over two years and it was sort of unintentional what was the most surprising thing about being an entrepreneur that just kind of was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't expect this. I'm sure there's a yeah. lot, but yeah, yeah, what, there's a lot. What there's is definitely it? one that stands out. What is it? <laughs> it is that failure is inevitable okay. when creating a business. Yeah. And that failure is the best way to grow mm -hmm. and the best way to gain knowledge and how to run your business. When I started my business, I had much thinner skin than I do now. Mm -hmm. And even now still, I'll have a lot of fails in my business and I will tear myself up and wanna quit, mm -hmm. wanna close my business, and then I'll pull myself back together and I'll get back up and um, find a way to learn from the experience and move on. So you still go through these ups and downs. It's, yes. Where you feel like a failure and then you like yes. see the learning that yes. opportunity within that yes. perceived failure and how you can grow from it. Exactly. And then you keep going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And growth is not linear. No. Not, not even close. That's it a is good like point. up and down <laughs> and up and down. And I'll have, I'll have one day where I'm like, yeah, I'm rocking this entrepreneur stuff. I'm just gonna you know, like make all the money and connect with all these people. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I'll be sobbing in my bed, like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I'm gonna let everybody down. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's so up and down. So how do you keep the perspective 
when when you're going through this like roller coaster? At first, that was really hard to do, and it still is hard to do. I mean, I'm still a baby business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm coming up against new obstacles weekly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll think I have one thing figured out, and then a new problem will arise, mm -hmm. and that just continues on. And I've kind of just come to recognize and expect failure. Okay. So just making peace yeah. with that so that failure doesn't surprise me helps me tremendously. That's such a good point. Yeah. yeah. Before this business, I only worked in the corporate world. I always had somebody above me mm -hmm. that would tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. There was a manual you could look up how to do anything in. And running this business, there's no manual. <laughs> there's no one to tell you how to do it. No it's blueprint. up to you. Yeah. There is nothing. And it's not like there are a lot of models for hula hoop businesses. No. Anyway. And this is a very right. um, unique type of business. And it was really, really hard in the beginning, mm -hmm. maneuvering through so much unknown territory. Mm -hmm. There were so many times when I just wanted to be like, damn it, somebody tell me what to do. <laughs> tell me how to do this. Like, you just kind of have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you have to figure it out on your own and it's a process of trial and error. It's still a constant learning process for me. I still get so discouraged on a weekly basis running this business. But the more that I just stay focused on my why and on my mission statement and on my students, um, the more confidence and stand in line building up to just keep pushing through. Yeah. It took me as an adult a very long time to understand how failure was useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that if I failed at anything at all, I was just, my, I had no self-worth. I, I thought failure was a reflection of my own self-worth as a human. Mm -hmm. And it took me a really long time to understand, no, failure is really a learning opportunity. It is. Both in like practicing hula hooping when I'm not like getting a concept that I want to learn, but also yeah. with the rest of life too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even we talked about this in another segment that when you drop the hoop, that means you're learning something new. You right. know, you learn through your failures mm -hmm. along your hoop practice. Mm -hmm. And that applies to just I, all aspects of life. Right. I, honestly, when I started my business, I thought that having the passion and the inspiration and the mission statement was enough <laughs> to get me through anything <laughs> that wasn't. came my way. <laughs> and it was not. Yeah. I had to learn how to do a lot of stuff that I do not enjoy doing. Yeah. And I had to build my skill set and my knowledge. And I actually just recently came back to, came home from the Rise Business Conference. So I'm like attending business conferences yeah. to learn how to run my business. Yeah. There's a big part of it where you have to be humble to the learning process and do. know that you're not going to know how to do everything and you're going to have to just constantly be figuring it out. Yeah. And yeah. You, you, even if you don't want to do it, you just got to put in the hard work. Mm -hmm. Hard work, long hours without a promised paycheck. Wow. Pretty much sums it up. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. So make sure that you are passionate about the hard work and the yeah. process. Yeah. Because that's what gets me through it. Cool. So as you've grown as a business owner, yes, <laughs> I'm interested in learning. It's hard for me to like sit still and it is. This not is like to be super doing something. Challenging so I'm for just us. gonna like do some isolation do real it. quick. Beautiful. All right. So as a business owner, what are some tips that you have learned in regards to managing your time over these last two <laughs> years? <laughs> two years. <laughs> Ask me again in twenty years. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll come back. To uh, this. <laughs> Uh, no, this is a really good question yeah. and I have learned the importance of my time and the importance of having my priorities mm. in check and I am constantly asking myself, am I just spending time or am I investing my time? Oh, whoa. Yeah. I never thought about that yeah. differentiation. Yeah. That's, Spending time versus investing. That was something that one of the speakers said Ooh, at the business nice. conference that I attended. So. Nice. Now I gain that knowledge. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but now on a daily basis, I'm asking myself that question. Am I investing in my business? Am I investing in my marriage? Mm -hmm. Am I investing in my relationship with my kids? I mean, it's all intertwined. When you own a business, you don't get to just 
clock out at the end of the day, go home, and have a whole separate personal life. Mm -hmm. Everything is intertwined. Mm -hmm. Even on holidays and birthdays and vacations and all that, I, I can't be completely unplugged. Yeah, by the way, everybody, it's her birthday today. Oh, yes. And we're ah. working. <laughs> like, we're sitting down to I film these videos. <laughs> yeah, it's literally your birthday today, yeah. and yet today we have filmed like four or five of these videos so far mm -hmm. and we've chatted about other footage that we filmed already mm -hmm. and yeah yeah did you answer any emails today and <laughs> no okay I have, I, well i have checked some emails and put them on my to-do list okay. but i have not answered them okay. yet because this was my priority today gotcha yes. okay yeah connecting so you wanted your with focus my audience yeah. is what i'm investing my time in today cool i love it <laughs> as far as managing my day my mornings and my evenings are pretty much for my family. Mornings can be a little bit hectic mm -hmm. because my oldest just started kindergarten and we're getting into a whole new morning routine with that. I try to be very present with them yeah. up until I drop them off. I used to, in the beginning, I'd listen to business messages in the car on my way to drop them off at school, mm -hmm. and it would just start up my day in a very frantic mindset, and then I'd feel guilty about not paying attention to my kids in the car. I have to set very specific rules for myself in order mm. to manage my day appropriately. Okay. When I am on my way to drop off my kids to school, I turn off my phone and I just talk to them. And just remember that um, as much as I love my business and as much as I'm passionate about it, my husband and my kids come first. Right. And I Boundaries don't- and priorities. Yeah, and I don't want building this business to, to threaten that mm -hmm. or to affected in any way really yeah. I mean it's gonna affect it but if anything I want my kids to look at me as building something incredible yeah. and to admire the heart and the soul and the hard work that I'm putting into it yeah I'm gonna start crying no um, I'm very proud of my business and it's something I never would have thought that I'd be able to do. Managing my day has been another very difficult struggle for me mm -hmm. um, because since I'm such a creative person, I like to just run with whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. But I have to have a specific time of day that I answer emails, that I edit videos, that I um, go through my finances, that I deal with website issues, mm -hmm. that I um, check in with my customer service team, mm -hmm. that I communicate with our Hoopsmith. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to have everything in a timeline because if I say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna catch up on emails, it'll take me an hour, and it takes me five hours. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh crap, I'm gonna be behind on all this other yeah. stuff now. Do you like, ever fully catch up? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that, that that doesn't exist oh. in <laughs> entrepreneurship. <laughs> and that's another thing you just have to make peace with. Yeah. Um, but it's a good thing mm -hmm. because if you catch up, then you're not growing. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Last question yes. and the, probably the biggest question of yeah. all. Holding back the tears already. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part of being a small business owner and an entrepreneur? I never thought that I would get to this point in my life where I was so passionate about my job. And it's not just a job, it's it's a career. And yeah. it's a business, yeah. it's a business that I've created and that I'm growing and failing and <laughs> learning through. And then growing again. And then growing again. <laughs> I'm so thankful that I wake up every day mm -hmm. and I go to work at my desk in the middle of my kitchen. <laughs> um, easy commute. Yes, easy commute in my pajamas, yeah. after dropping off my boys. <laughs> and I, my heart and soul is in my work every single day. And I feel so blessed that I have this job that I can be so passionate about yeah. and that I can pour my heart and soul into and that makes me very vulnerable, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. My favorite thing about this business is just aside from the immense passion that I have for my job and you know, it not always even feeling like work because I enjoy it so much, it's having 
so much freedom. And I'm not talking about freedom in my time mm -hmm. because I work harder than I've ever yeah. worked in my life. I'm talking about freedom in my creativity. Mm. And, um, you know, at previous jobs, I'd, I'd get an idea and mention it to a manager and they'd just kind of be like, oh, well, yeah, that sounds cool. And, you know, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But now I come up with an idea and I watch it turn into something and I get feedback from people come to me and say, you're the reason I started hooping. Your course walked me through it and made my journey so much easier. That just means so much to me. It just, not the validation that I get out of it, but just the the heart to heart connection that I have with people. Yeah. That is the biggest joy that I get yeah. out of my business. And I just, I can't emphasize enough how grateful I am yeah. to have this business. And it's pulled me in so many different directions that I never expected. I mean, I never expected to be sitting here yeah. with hula hooping Hannah, <laughs> drinking tea. Well, Michelle, you are changing the world. I am also, are you? Yeah. Oh, God. Stop, Stop it. No, we're not crying. Stop. I'm not crying. Stop. You're crying. You're crying. Stop it. Stop. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh my god, it didn't record. Just kidding. <laughs> Better not freaking say that. Like 1950s sitcom TV show. Hey, Hooping World, it's Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, beautiful souls. This is Michelle. <laughs> Definitely gonna cry during this <laughs> No, you can't cry because then I'll cry. I know. <laughs> Well, then we'll, they'll really see our authenticity. <laughs> no! 